What is up, everybody? Welcome to the Bell Vista Studio Show. My name's Kim Tui. I work at Bell Vista Studios. And the intent of this show is to chat with awesome people like my guest today, um, basically to learn and be curious because they're doing good things that we appreciate and we think that they can add more value to us and also to you guys, the community. So today, I want to recognize Amanda and thank you for being on the show because this is our first time talking, but we've yeah. been connected on LinkedIn and I've been following what you're up to. <laughs> and I just, I want to recognize you for the passion that you bring to our industry from an instructional design and development perspective. I think it's really cool. And our team definitely vibe with people like that. So it's really <laughs> inspiring us for us to see that. And also like the designs that you're doing in the development tools, which are the standard development tools. So it's nothing fancy, it's Articulate 360, it's Rise. And yeah. I think you're taking them to the next level and we can definitely uh, appreciate that you're using graphic design, user interface tips and techniques to apply to your designs. I think you have a lot of value to bring to the community that watch our videos. And so yeah, thank you so much for being on the show and welcome, we can't wait to learn thank from you. you. I'm really excited to be here. <laughs> Thanks for that I amazing think... introduction. <laughs> oh, that's right. <laughs> that's from my stalking on LinkedIn. <laughs> Very nice. No worries. I don't know anything much more about you. <laughs> well, I think yeah. the start question before we jump into seeing some examples is um, you call yourself a learning experience designer. And I got this question the other day. So I wanted yeah. to know what do you see as the or is there a difference between a learning experience designer and an instructional designer yeah yeah look i think um for me personally i've only started using the term um probably two years ago um, i had the awesome privilege to going over to the netherlands to meet the founder of the coining term um, of learning experience designer his name is Niels floor um, i'll share some links then to, for you to read his bio but he developed a learning experience design canvas and he took us through this canvas and it really allowed us to um, explore what learning experience design means and it's a concoction of um, user experience design, design thinking, project management um, and blending in with your traditional ADDI model and learning development principles. Um, so for me the reason why I call myself a learning experience designer and not an L&D consultant or instructional designer, I feel that with learning experience design there's so much more flexibility and movement for you to develop, create, but also look at the end-to-end -end experience. Mm -hmm. um, instructional design for me, um, I, I personally see it as quite um, linear and not a lot of movement to grow and flourish. But look, I think with role titles, you can call it whatever you like, right? I call myself a bit of everything. Mm -hmm. um, people call me instructional designer. They call me an e-learning developer. To be honest, I just, I, I don't mind. As long as I get to create, <laughs> yeah. it, it, it's a great thing. So um, look, I think, yeah, again, learning experience design is a concoction of, um, you know, uh, UX design, design thinking principles blended with L&D. Um, and I, I thought that, you know, coining that term together with the movement of UX designers nowadays and the UI movement, um, it fits well with what we're trying to achieve for the future of learning. So yeah. that's that's my take on it. Nice. <laughs> Please don't quote me on this. This is just my my own personal. <laughs> <laughs> no, you are the Bible now. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> well, just so the Alex Canvas, yeah, that is actually a really cool tool. So what I'll do is all the resources and that I'm going to document them as we're chatting, and I'll Perfect. put them in the comments afterwards so people can grab them. Yeah, cool. So, <laughs> Do you want to bring up anything you want to share and allow, you can talk us through it. I'll ask right. questions and just to understand your process. So yeah, we'd love to yeah, see definitely. what you're working on. Okay, cool. Um, so I think I'll start with the, um, the cybersecurity awareness module. Um, so the reason why uh, Lend-Lease has been focusing on cyber um, security quite a bit is with all the uh, media issues um, with other companies that have been um, breached by their, um, you know, had data breaches. And it, it's a big thing at the moment with cyber security. So um, the focus of this project that I was working on was to really focus on how we can bring awareness to our staff members. Um, it, you know, as much as we coin it compliance training, we really wanted to strip it back and just say, hey, 
this is the ripple effects if you don't lock your laptop or this is what could potentially impact your personal life through to um, your life here at Lendlease. Um, if you create a simple password, little things like that. So it was more of an awareness piece. Yeah. Um, in terms of the development process, we spent quite a bit of time, about six months or so, really looking at the content, talking to our users, our stakeholders. Um, we had some external companies. We had Deloitte um, work with us as well to be the subject matter expert in cybersecurity. Um, so it was, a, it, was, it was a big team, a big project, yeah. um, but I'm glad I came in at the end because that was when my <laughs> contract started <laughs> um, to really tie it all together and, and bring the content to life. Um, so with the development process here and how I work, um, I like to work with a blank canvas, give me all the content under the sun, um, let me understand the problem. Um, so a lot of the times we focus first on defining a problem statement and really tipping down to what it means um, for a user if they were to interact with this piece of content, how, how it will impact them on their day to day um, and if we can embed that into the workflow as well. So we really wanted to keep the content quite conversational, really stripping back all the technical terms um, within the learning and the content that was provided to us. Yeah. Um, because cybersecurity can be quite technical with some of the long terms um, that the specialists might use or subject matter experts might use. So we really just stripped it all the way back. Uh, my uh, colleague and I, we sat down and we were getting into our storytelling mindset <laughs> nice. to really just um, create a story for our users. So I'll share my screen now. Um, okay, so I'll cool. take you through um, the whole development process. So while you're loading, I'll just break down a few of the things that you've spoken about there, user interviews, analyzing the problem that is at hand, that are, they are what human-centered design is all about. So if you do a simple Google on human-centered design or we've got blogs and stuff, it's, it's out there everywhere, um, yeah. you will get the tips to be able to do that analysis kind of process that Amanda's team and herself have gone through to then be able to give her this blank canvas to see exactly what we're going to have a look at right now. Absolutely. So can you see my screen? Yes, I can. Awesome. Okay. So um, what we did was we really wanted to create a personalized learning approach for the user, um, but to help them get into the mindset um, of completing this learning, we really wanted to um, create a video uh, that created a video that would set their emotional, um, just emotional mindset. So we really want to just create that scene so they can just relax and watch this amazing video. Um, I'm, it's about a minute and 22 seconds. I'm not okay. sure if you want to. Uh, Let's watch it. like 30 uh, seconds, unless it's done. Amazeballs. No, nah, I'm only joking. It probably won't yeah. be anyway. It's <laughs> our greatest asset. It can also open us up to huge risks. Even the simplest action can have widespread consequences. Cyber threats can come from anywhere and leave companies and employees exposed. Just one wrong click is all it takes. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. Our criminals access to right. Addresses. So I'll, I'll just show you a snippet of that. But really, we wanted to scare people. <laughs> uh, yeah. Right. Right at the beginning um, and we worked with an external provider to uh, create that video. So um, yeah. it was all used in in-house props I was standing um, with a blackboard um, just covering the lights and in the back so that it doesn't shine on the screen It was really fun. It was a fun That's video cool. to create. Before so, you go um, any further, can I just ask a few questions that it, to clarify it. some things that you've been speaking about so in terms of um, the filming and that you did get an external provider in to do it, but are they actors or are they staff that are doing that film? Um, we had three actors um, okay. that part of the agency that we were working with um, and they were using Lindley's props, um, using yeah. one of our offices. Um, yeah, cool. But it, uh, what we did was we created the script. Um, we worked with them to storyboard um, the different scenes and what we really wanted to include um, inside the video. Yeah. Um, and, and, and that was it. So we probably coordinated and managed um, the logistics with the scripting, the storytelling, and really trying to um, connect with our users and our audience. Yep. Um, other than that, they just brought our content um, to life and really um, 
yeah, adding in the nice effects and, and the sound and uh, just the movements of the, um, the cameras as well. So, yeah. um, In terms of emotion, why yes. did you open with this video? So what I can re recognize now is it's straight into the video, no content, yeah. no nothing. So what's important to you by having that emotional connection for your learners straight up? Yeah, so um, I think with, um, I'm not sure how many cybersecurity modules um, you've experienced in the past, I'm sure you've experienced quite a few, um, and for myself personally as well. Um, we wanted to do a different take and really use um, video, this video that we've developed to, um, one, spark awareness and just spark the, um, the amount of impact that, uh, you know, a threat can have through one click. So we wanted to really hone in on a example or a scene where um, you know, a user could feel, oh, okay, this is something that I do every day um, by clicking a simple link through a funny cat meme video or something that my friends send me. You know, just a simple action could create a drastic um, impact on the company, but not so the company, but also um, you know, your personal life through friends, family, it could impact them and their data as well. Yeah. Um, so we were workshopping different ways uh, to bring that to life. We weren't, initially it wasn't going to be a video. Initially it was just going to be a nice um, video from our CEO, um, typical yeah. CEO video, um, introducing the importance of cybersecurity and why we need it here as a company. Um, so we completely flipped that <laughs> and really just wanted to create an engaging, um, emotionally connecting video that um, would really trigger people's day-to-day um, -day interactions um, that yeah. they have normally. I can yeah. definitely appreciate that um, those first impressions you have done a great job of because it's unexpected. It does, it's relatable like that. The message that popped up on the phone is what we're all used to now. We want to see those yeah. funny videos and that. And then Absolutely. after the video, we are coming into something that looks really clean and modern. So yeah, take us from here. Yeah, perfect. Um, so after the video, we wanted to give the users an opportunity to, um, you know, be greeted with a personalized approach. Um, we've had feedback that they thought it was a trick if we were to enter our names, but oh, I'll wow. just do him. <laughs> so we're very clever, the video worked, right? The video worked yeah. we? and we haven't even started the learning yet. So um, we just had to put a little prompt at the bottom that this isn't a cyber trick. <laughs> oh, wow, that's cool. Yeah, um, so entering into the learning, um, just again, how to navigate the learning. It was more about um, you know understanding your progress, how to exit the course and homepage. Yep. And do this is all done through do... Storyline. Oh, yeah. cool. Yeah. So we're in Storyline at the moment. Do you normally yeah, do okay. navigation tutorials like that in all your modules, or what's your thinking um, of when you do and don't? Only sometimes. Um, so, for example, for this piece, we wanted to keep clean text, easy navigation, because a lot of our users would be completing it via their phone. Um, so we tried to strip back and not put a lot of content in there. And with that, we did need a, um, a navigation uh, bar for some of our users. Yeah. Um, not all the time I would be developing in this way. Um, I would sometimes, actually most of the time, I'll be using Rise because it's quite quick. Yeah. Um, and for any um, custom uh, interactions I'd need to create, um, I'll create it in Storyline and then I'll um, embed that as a Storyline block inside Rise. Very cool. Yeah. Thank you. No um, And so then this takes the user through to the landing page. So with this landing page, um, the purpose of this interaction was to allow the user to explore the content. Um, it's not locked down to um, any section that you need to complete first. Yep. Um, it's purely for you to explore um, what content's relevant to you at this point in time, but you do need to complete the whole thing. <laughs> So question um, there, yeah. so a compliance course, but you've given yeah. users the freedom. How did you push yeah. back on stakeholders that normally are like, no, oh, we need to lock everything. <laughs> Absolutely. Or some tips or things we can say <laughs> to our stakeholders. Yeah, look, I think sometimes um, with stakeholders, their, their priority is um, getting the content across to sign off um, a certain measure that they might have. I think for learning professionals um, like ourselves, it's down to us to really take them on a journey to understand that um, our audience are the users um, and they need to be, um, you know, be able to navigate at their own will. And it's like when we, you know, read articles online or when we navigate the internet and search different bits and bobs, 
it's not locked down in any way, shape or form. So um, we, what we did was we matched up the um, learning objectives that we've created with their success measures to the certain parts of content within the module, um, just so one, the stakeholders are at ease that we are using their content. Yeah. Um, but it's also building trust that, you know, they, they've reached out to us for, for a reason and it's for us to bring this content to life, but also to tick off the learning objectives that was established right at the beginning. So oh, um, throughout, yeah, so it was, um, it was a fun mapping exercise <laughs> <laughs> um, for me because I, I develop on the go. Um, I'm, I'm not a fan of storyboarding. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> because I'm just, yeah, no, I'm just thinking, I'm like, eh, here you go, here's a rapid prototype and we work by sprints. Yep. Um, I would probably lay out the content in clusters in, in how um, the flow of the development um, would look like. So more so wireframing than storyboarding content. Yep. Um, and with the wireframing that we do, we, we do it in PowerPoint, just keeping it simple. And uh, we just match up the learning objectives so that the stakeholders can see that we are um, doing it to their standard, to what they need to measure as well. Yeah, yep. that's cool. Thank you. <laughs> no worries. Um, so... As you might have guessed that the colour theme is orange and red. <laughs> That's just <laughs> the colour theme. Um, but I'll take you through Defend Your Device because I've had a lot of feedback on this piece um, in how I developed it. Yep. So um, in some of the content, um, I really pushed for creating a fun game. <laughs> nice. I think it's nice to break it up um, as opposed to just reading the content um, throughout. So yep. Um, yep. with this game here, um, I wanted the user to um, really beat a cyber criminal um, in certain situations that they might experience yep. um, and I'll, I'll, I'll just take you through actually um, so again all of this was created in Storyline Illustrator and I used Beyond um, if anyone has Beyond out there it is amazing um, just create quick GIFs um, out of it and I just laid it in the back so it looks like an ongoing animation but it's really just a nice that's cool. Yeah, Beyond is like you can create animations that are like the little whiteboard or these characters yeah. right here. And you don't have to get an annual license. Like, so in the past, we were only getting a monthly casual one and that was right. charged right. on to clients. So, right. you, yeah, think about how that cost is in the project cost for your client oh, rather okay. than um, you having to wear the cost of this license that you might think is expensive. Yeah, absolutely. That's actually a great tip because because at the moment we've absorbed all the costs. <laughs> <for which one. laughs> Very clever. I'm going to use that feature when I nice. <laughs> um, So again, it was uh, simple questions, um, simple questions that a user might experience day in, day out. Um, so here at Lendlease, we um, probably get our users to reset their passwords quite regularly <laughs> yep. due to security breaches and risks. So um, for example, you have to choose a new password. What do you choose? I'm just going to choose all caps. Yeah, so um, I've created a, um, so do you remember at the beginning how I entered your name? Yeah. Yeah. You so, give points to the criminal. <laughs> but, I'm sorry, apologies. No, <laughs> good. No, but um, that's what we wanted to create in terms of the personalization of yeah. this, um, this module was to, you know, put little nuggets of where they can interact with the content in a fun way. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, so I just used, um, I think it was the, oh, one of the, um, Oh, my storyline brain's farting today. Sorry. Um, a name, uh, a little variable that I put in there to calculate the points as well in a scoring system. Yep. Um, Can I, I address, yeah. Oh, sorry. Oh, yeah. I just wanted to ask you. So quite often we hear from clients, oh, we can't use this cartoony style. You know, yes. we, we work with our, um, adults oh, and professionals. Yeah. So talk oh, to oh, me oh, about oh. your experience of that. Yeah, um, I get that question quite a lot. Um, and because my design style is quite illustrative, um, bright yes. and vibrant, that's just yep. the kind of person that I am. Yep. Um, but, you know, uh, the funny thing about this cyber piece was initially my, um, my prototype that I developed was a bit too um, out there. Um, <laughs> so I had to rein it back in. Yep. Um, and I'll show you what I developed. I have it here, actually. Yeah, so cool. this was the look and feel that I was going for at the beginning. Yeah, wow. So this was the initial prototype concept that I was going for um, yep. to enter, you know, Cyberland um, and it would be all animated and fun. But we had a lot of feedback from our users that they couldn't connect with the content. And I think that's why um, I've only developed a game um, in that illustrative approach, which was the yep. one that I was showing you before. So again, I think as designers, we tend to get, um, when we, uh, you know, get tasked with having full creative reign, 
we go a bit too crazy and get excited. <laughs> and I know I get really, really excited. Um, but I think um, at the end of the day, it's your users that are interacting with yep. um, this content. So making sure that you know you understand your users, um, understand um, you know what kind of content and and design and um, you know if it's either clear visuals versus um, I icons versus you know um, the illustrative approach, which they connect to more, um, yep. and getting the message across for your content as well is important. Yeah, so, that's cool. And that's the value of human-centered design. Oh, sorry. Yeah. No, 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 um, go, go for it, go for it. Go I was just going to say, it's the value of human-centered design is that you, it is iterative and you're asking for Absolutely. continuous feedback. So yeah. if this learning experience as a whole is probably more valuable for your learners because they've had feedback and you've gone from here and started to funnel it into something that they perceive as valuable and useful for them. So it is about continuously checking in, get feedback, right. what we as learning designers think is the solution or our stakeholders think is the solution is not always the case so you need Absolutely. to test and ask people and just as well we'll point out that the, what you look like you were designing in there is adobe illustrator which is great for vectors and like illustrations that, yeah. uh, if you do have access to those tools yeah um, I'll also share some free tools um, with you after the session as well so for people who um, you know don't have the adobe creative cloud suite I have a whole range of free resources for you to access and you can mimic and create Amazing. similar things that I'm creating as well. Thank you. Um, that's okay. So I'll just quickly take you through um, these interactions here um, and then I'll um, showcase to you uh, what I did outside <laughs> of the illustrative approach within the cyber learning as well. Yeah, cool. Um, one second. Oh, I love Beyond. It's such a fun, quick animation tool. I love what you're doing. It's inspired me for sure, definitely. I can't oh, wait I for so. our team to see this and for yeah. everyone else because um, it's really bringing it to life. And oh, what I love yeah. is the movement. So the simple little things of the score oh. floating up, your background that's showing on screen now is moving. It's got yeah. like this fluid approach. So it almost like e-learning and our lives a lot of the time are in rectangles. We look at our phones, we're watching TV, we're looking out windows, everything is a rectangle in our life. And I love that you are bringing this movement and fluidity into it because it, it almost brings momentum to the learning experience. Right. Oh, you articulate things so well. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, this is the final landing page. I'll just quickly skim through to get back yeah, to yeah. The, um, the main page. Uh, and we also came up with some nice quotes um, that we worked as part of our marketing <laughs> campaign. <laughs> Very cool. Makes sense. It was pretty cool. Yeah, I like it. Um, Were they used as like initiatives, like posters around the place oh, or anything? Absolutely. As well? Oh, cool. We, we guerrilla marketed cyber anything in this company. It was funny. It. Um, we had a massive campaign after this learning piece was rolled out. Yep. Um, you know, through to um, locking your passwords, we had those stickers, QR codes to, you know, quick fun quizzes. It was, it was a really fun campaign. Very cool. Um, I think it was the risky business. Okay, so here, this is a new, a, a different style and look and feel. So yep. for this chapter, we went for the, um, you know, clean visuals approach, keeping clean and simple, um, reflective words. <laughs> This is an example of an animation that we worked with an external provider to create. Um, yep. I would have loved to create a, um, an animation in-house, but for the amount of time that I had, couldn't deliver in time. So yeah, we did work enough. with a couple of, yeah. And look, animations take time. I'm not going to lie. I would love to spend a month just making, you know, that skeleton animate, probably take me a month, um, yep. and yeah. outsourcing it. So, yeah, but, but it's true, right? I think it's about using our time um, efficiently um, yep. and, you know, um, outsourcing things that, you know, um, need to be and really focus on the content and, and bringing it all together. Yeah. So Nick did this animation and he's awesome. Um, but, you know, we kept the words quite um, short. So this is an example of just, you know, mimicking a carousel inside um, Storyline. Yeah. That's one thing that we can't do in um, Storyline if there's a nice plugin that we could create a nice carousel movement, but we can't. So I just mocked this up. Yeah. It has buttons. 
um, and a user can click through. So again, just keep keeping the content quite clean. Um, there's still a little bit of um, an illustrative approach with the icons, but we really wanted to just strip back the content yeah. um, and giving the users different things to see so they don't get bored. <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> a beautiful, um, I don't know, it's got a nice vibe to it. I love everything that's going on with the photo to the icon to the center text, uh, minimal. Um, it's good. I like it. Yeah. And it sits quite nicely on your mobile as well. So I think um, when I was designing this, I was just keeping mobile at the forefront because I think yeah. when you design for your desktop and computer, that, that's easy. It's, it's standard. Um, it, it looks how it looks um, when you develop it. Um, but with Storyline, I've noticed that, you know, when you create um, content, it scales quite small <laughs> yeah. onto your phone. So we wanted to keep the text as minimal as possible. Can you, um, do you mind just doing the preview in the phone to show people what that looks see over on the right? Absolutely. Um, yeah. There you go. So it, it sits quite cleanly yep. in the progress bar as well. Again, I try to keep it so simple um, for the users to click and navigate. Yeah, nice. But that's, that, that was our approach, um, just stripping back the content keep getting straight to the point and um, keeping it minimal. Minimal is good. <laughs> yeah, very cool. Yeah. Um, so I, that's cyber in a nutshell, to be honest. Um, oh, it's glitching. <laughs> <laughs> but look, it, it was a big piece. And I think for me, and I'd love to ask, um, you know, anyone who's listened to this podcast, that one of the biggest takes and learning um, in developing this was the translation. <laughs> Talk to us about um, that. Yeah, so we um, had to translate this course into four different languages. Um, and I found myself manually pasting each of the fonts and the text and all of the illustrations that I've designed. If there were texts in there, I'd have to go back into Illustrator mm. and uh, translate that. If there's a hack out there, I'm probably missing it um, to translate in a click of a button. Please, someone show me. <laughs> <Someone's> <laughs> told me. I don't know the answer either. I want to know though. <laughs> oh, yeah, because, you know, and I think with different development tools, and that's why we've opted to use Rise quite a bit because the translations, is, uh, it, it's an easier process. You can export yeah. the file and, and get that translated. Um, oh, man, but for Storyline, I was like sitting at my desk for days just copy and pasting. <laughs> so yeah. please, any tips, hacks or tricks um, in terms of translation, let me know. <laughs> that's cool. Were there any um, challenges yes. that you faced with this project yourself and how did you overcome them? Oh, absolutely. It was um, the content versus the stakeholders <laughs> that was, and, and the SMEs. Um, and I think because, you know, I think as learning people, we, um, you know, the learners are at the forefront of, of what we're developing for and who we're developing for. Um, and I'm sure a lot of people can relate when um, our SMEs or stakeholders want to cram every single word, word for word inside the learning. Yeah. So it was about understanding their, um, you know, their concerns, unpacking their concerns, unpacking their, um, you know, fears as to why, um, you know, we're not approaching the way that they're envisioning. So it's taking yeah. them on a journey and really painting the story of, you know, it's the learners that will be interacting with this. Um, and you know, as much as you guys are SMEs, um, it's stripping back that content so that you know, it's conversational, it's connect, it's easily to, um, you know, for a user to connect with. So. That was, um, yeah, we had a, a couple of headbutts there. Um, I'm, yeah. I'm not going to lie. Um, but I think eventually as they saw the, um, the module come to life, um, and I design in sprints. So I, I would design in clusters of content. Yep. And I'll continually connect with our SMEs and our stakeholders um, just so they can see um, the development process. And I would um, always give them, you know, some context as to why I developed the content in that way and what learning yeah. objectives, again, tying back to their learning objectives that we've worked with them to set, yeah. um, to align that, you know, it, we've, we've ticked it off. <laughs> <It's Yes. there. laughs> so talk to me yeah. about your sprints. Like how far would you go in one spree, sprint before you <laughs> show it to a stakeholder? And then how do you communicate what it is? Is it putting it onto review? And then how do you yeah. share that context? Yeah, um, I'll, I, I'll show you um, another project that I'm working on um, okay. at the moment. Whoops. Okay, so this is due today, <laughs> but you guys can have an insight <laughs> to what I'm working on. Um, so um, I'm working on a wellbeing piece at the moment. Um, 
for Lend Lease, um, and it's about giving nine different modules to our users to experience. Uh, it's 10 minute bite sized modules, and if they yep. really like it, they can then go and enroll in a nice workshop that we run externally. Yeah. So, because um, what we usually do is um, we would develop a proposal um, to our uh, stakeholders first, um, outlining um, the sprints <laughs> in detail of when yep. the review period is, um, when they can expect a prototype and yep. keeping the communication stream quite open. Um, when I design the first prototype, I get the, um, I'll probably do rough um, illustrations or do rough um, interactions that I might need to build and yep. just give them some context as to why I'm creating that. Um, and when I share them the link, um, I would probably book a phone call as well just to take them through my thinking patterns because sometimes when I share a prototype to some um, user groups, they don't understand what they're reading <laughs> or um, they're, they're a bit unsure as to um, where to navigate or what to look at. So again, that's a good usability testing for me as well. Yeah. Um, but with sprints, I try to keep them as short as possible, either within three days to one week increments. If the project yeah, wow, is that's cool. uh, uh, six weeks long or um, a bit longer than that. Um, yeah. If it's a short project, I can just do it either within a week or check in um, every few days or so. Um, the stakeholders usually would reach out to me or I would reach out to them if I have a question. So again, keeping that communication stream open. Um, what hasn't worked so well in the past is if I were to develop a prototype and I get so caught into the development process that I don't connect or check in regularly. And then I would be developing this mass piece and the stakeholders weren't on a journey to understand how that development process is. So mm -hmm. I'm finding that's why I do really short sprints um, just to keep that um, communication stream open so they understand yeah. the bigger picture of where the development process is going. Very cool. Yeah. Um, so prototyping um, for me is laying out all of the bloody titles <laughs> and <laughs> dumping all the content in there. So again, for me, I like to cluster the content after I've received it. Um, and also um, do a bit of copywriting and storytelling, so retelling the story in a nice yeah. conversational way. Do you normally just get it in a Word document or how do you normally receive yeah. content? I like it in complete black and white. Plain. Yeah. Dump all the text in there. You don't need to put titles. Just put it into me um, uh, yeah. in a Word document um, because it helps me um, design the flow while I'm reading. Um, I like to map the content out um, in my own headspace <laughs> and then I um, create that in a proposal for them to see how I've grouped the content. And yep. the rationalizing between why I've grouped it the way that I've grouped it. Yeah. So just to clarify pe for people as well, it sounds like you're really like you're highly skilled at instructional design and learning experience <laughs> design. So you're kind of skipping steps in terms of what you said about not doing storyboards and not liking them because you can work it all out in your head and go forward and paint that picture clearly. Mm -hmm. Whereas sometimes I know I can get overwhelmed with projects and when I receive right. content like that I have to you know plan it out and I have a storyboard or first of all I have a high level strategy which goes these are like these are my headings this is all the content that goes in there and then I'm stepping it through because I need to see it visually um, and that helps me communicate better but what you're doing is you're still doing the process <laughs> you're just yeah. doing it in a way that works for you and right. it allows you to skip steps and because you can um the way you're working with clients you've got it you know where you need their feedback and all that so you kind of right. as you say you're rapid pro prototyping but you're still doing all the things that we do or like instructional designers and learning experience designers do Right. So, yeah, you're just good at it. Yeah. So it's cool. I'm no, I'm a messy designer. That's what the problem is. <laughs> oh, no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> I'm a creative mess. I'm an absolute mess, Lord. I think um, <laughs> I I personally found what works for me. Um, I also work with another learning solutions lead um, in my team, my colleague, my lovely colleague Sandy, and I give her anxiety um, the way that I develop. <laughs> <laughs> and because she came from an education background so you know um and i'm learning so much from her along the way as yeah. much as she's learning from me but look um a tip to everyone out there find a process that works for you yes. um this works for me and my stakeholders um and look there, there are some stakeholders that i personally work with that um probably don't suit the, the approach that i go and that's where i flex 
um, my approach whilst I'm working with them. So um, if they want a storyboard, I'll bung it together in a nice PowerPoint presentation for them. <laughs> um, yeah, so going into the, um, the prototype phase for me um, means um, giving, the, giving your um, stakeholders some nice little visual nuggets. Um, I think as much as we have the content there and um, you know, it, it's all laid out um, in clusters, they can't visually see it until you give yes. them something tangible to play and interact with. Um, so this is just a little sample um, that I'll share with you guys. So again, it's just all in black and white at the moment because I'm still going through. Yep. Um, so part of this project, my role is to bring a, uh, a framework to life. Um, and what I wanted was the users to really explore um, the different bite nuggets that are available to them as part of this nine module piece of the wellbeing yep. framework. Um, I am planning to develop this inside storyline and um, maybe add some nice hover interactions and will be on an animated GIF. So this is just a rough prototype for the, um, the stakeholders to see. Yep. I'll be taking them through um, my thinking as to why I've um, approached it this way. Yeah. Um, so it's just little things that they can visually see the style and approach. Yeah. <laughs> what were they developed in? Um, this was in Go Animate. So oh, Go Animate. Yeah, and it's really easy with Go Animate because you can just add like um, character triggers um, and you can tween the movement. So if you move one character here to here, you can make a, a smooth movement with that. Yeah. So that's a really fun one. Um, but it's just about keeping it simple for them to see what the first modules would look like. So this is a placeholder for a video um, that we're getting developed with our external animators. Yep. Um, but that's about it. So see, this is me dumping all the content in here and visualizing yeah. how I'll bring it to life. But this is the first prototype that I'll be sharing with them today. Yeah. Uh, and I'll take them through the flow of the clustered information that um, they've given me so far. Um, and the call to action for this is for users to go and experience a full day workshop. Um, so oh. ho hopefully it's, it's just a nice little uh, taste tester, if anything, for the content that's there. Yep. Um, but again, it's bringing your stakeholders on the journey right from the beginning, as opposed to developing something um, in detail and then giving it to them to review. Um, yeah. I, I what, um, what parameters do you put then on your stakeholders for giving feedback here? Because obviously it's the yeah. first time they're going to see it and mm -hmm. they might jump in and be like, I hate the carrot or I want yeah. more the broccoli. But you're like, yeah. are you just focusing on content? So talk us through how you decide in your of sprints. Course and control yep. the feedback that you get. Yeah, so before I give them the prototype, I would book in a meeting to um, explain initial design concepts. Yeah. So that yeah. then sets the tone and the scene of what their expectations are. And I think managing that expectations before my prototype um, reaches to them. Yeah. Um, so yeah. I, I booked in a meeting with um, my stakeholders last week and I just sat through and talked to them um, through the proposal that I developed, um, the timeframe, yeah. Um, when we check in, um, you know, and I'm, I'm always here if they need to reach out anyway. But also, again, it's just setting that expectation so they understand um, the, the concept, the flow, um, how I'm clustering the content and snippets of what it can potentially look like. Yeah. Um, so I'll show you the proposal content. It's not confidential. It's just, yeah. So, yeah. This is how I go by approaching um, what visual design concepts I'm potentially designing for for each of yep. the modules. So they get a grasp understanding of um, you know what approach I'm going for. Um, so that's oh, and also I, I'm happy to share this with you guys. But um, just the um, different co uh, content development or learning interactions that I will be developing inside the yep. prototype as well. Um, so again, they can see the flow um, of the clustering of the information and, and um, what to expect. Yeah. So I always have this conversation. Oh, mm. sorry, you go, sorry. No, 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 I, I, I was just gonna say, I usually have this conversation before I develop the prototype. So everyone's all on the same page. <laughs> yeah. I definitely yeah. agree with you in taking the time to plan like this and communicate things up front to set that expectation. I know a lot of people find it challenging to make the time to do this and they just right. maybe right. they rush in and start storyboarding or start working on the content or start developing. Are there any tips yeah. that you can help kind of get 
across to people to see the value in having these conversations up front because I know oh. one of the things that would be is that it saves you rework working Absolutely. on designs later on and time down the track that is wasted if you don't do something like this up front so what tips would you Absolutely. have so as much as I'm a, uh, a messy designer <laughs> <laughs> I leave I leave my prototyping and development to last what I always tell the stakeholders is that developing the end product is the easy part of the process. The difficult part, um, part is probably, um, you know, defining what the problem we're trying to solve is and how that would connect to the users. Again, putting the users in the center because at the end of the day, um, why would they want to complete this? You know, why, um, what's the benefit of them in interacting with this content and what do you want the users to achieve? after they complete the content as well, or um, experience um, the, the module. So um, we spend a bit of time um, workshopping that um, at the beginning um, when a project is tasked um, to the learning leads. Yeah. Um, and I really focus on um, getting in detail, you know, um, the problems they're trying to, uh, who, who the audience is, um, you know, any success measures, um, every little nitty gritty thing in terms of, um, you know, the research phase of uh, the project before yeah. I even start thinking about design concepts or um, visual concepts and um, how to cluster the information or if there's yeah. content that's there or available. So um, really tying into what's the problem. <laughs> yeah. That's an ongoing um, question in my team when a stakeholder comes by and asks us, oh, I need a PowerPoint presentation to deliver next week on Wednesday. And I'm like, why? <laughs> yeah, nice. <laughs> why, why do you need that? Um, you know, is that really solving the issue that you're, you're trying to achieve or um, yeah. resolve? So taking the um, stakeholders on a journey and also coaching them to understand that, you know, if there's no problem, then there's no solution to create um, or develop a piece of learning. And sometimes it's not even a training piece. It's comms or it's, a yes. um, you know, sitting down and having a conversation with your team or just workshopping some ideas. So, um, it's a long journey, <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, to, to help our um, stakeholders understand that, but definitely planning, researching, 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 researching. Yeah. <laughs> um, I can't stress that enough in, um, in, in exploring the problem because five times out of 10 or one times out of 10, it might not even be a learning piece that you need to develop. Yeah. So, that's am it's yeah. amazing. Um, it sounds like you guys have a really, your organization has a real good culture and appreciation for your learning and development team. How did you yeah. get to that so that you can take the time to meet with right. stakeholders, um, to push back and say, hold on, let's see what the problem is that we actually need to yep. solve to solve the right problem. So what are some right. things that internal L&D people could say or people out there consulting with clients to help them appreciate this and speak and get this value and this appreciation yeah. for the process. Absolutely. It's about asking the right questions, right? Um, and I'll, I'll share with you uh, a prime example that um, we've experienced here at Lindley's um, in the learning team. So um, probably about a few months ago, we developed a, um, like a learning request form and we thought we had the right questions on there really tapping into you know who's your audience um is there a capability gap like you know your normal your typical um learning request form yep. what we found was that our um, stakeholders were nearly just filling it in thinking that yes it's important yes it's a requirement so we've given them an actually a scoping document so they're not they're, they're quite unsure as to um defining the problem or they're unsure to you know in their minds, they probably already have a solution that they've wanted to reach out to us to develop. But so what we've done is we've eliminated that learning request and we've only sent out one question. What is yep. the problem you're trying to solve? That's it. <laughs> wow. So from that question, that's when they start thinking, they're like, oh, okay, so maybe I have a list of questions and then we book in a meeting with them to have a, a detailed conversation and really dig deep as to what we're trying to solve. Yep. And from there, we can then identify the appropriate solution or approach. If it's a learning piece, if it's a marketing comms, um, if it's a change management piece that you might need our change management team to go and help you with. Um, if it's it's not an e-learning piece, it's a, a quick fact guide. It's a one pager. Yeah. Yep. So from that question, it helps us filter all the other things that, you know, we probably don't need to ask until after we answer yep. that question. 
Um, so for us, it's so important to identify what the problem is and, you know, asking one question, <laughs> not mm. bombard your stakeholders with many questions, yeah. just to help, it helps them reflect a bit, helps them reflect on what they're trying to achieve and if it's either a business need or if it's something that, you know, part of their KPI. So if it's, if that's the case, then we might need to rework the solution to make sure that there's benefit and value for our end users yeah, wow. as well. Um, it's, it's a journey <laughs> again. Um, it's, it's, you know, being, um, taking that initiative to taking, taking a step back to coach your um, stakeholders yeah. and your, um, your peers to understand that, you know, solving the problem is um, priority first. Um, but in identifying the problem is, is another part as well. So. Yeah, that's cool. Well, I find, yeah, not always can we influence clients to focus on that and it is reactive or they have a solution in mind. Um, but through working with them and just developing the course that they need, I yeah. think the conversations that you have in that project, the next uh -huh. time they might come to you a bit differently and say, hey, you know all that weird stuff you were talking about, like solving the right problem? Yeah. Can we have conversations around that for our next project? So although you might not win in the first instance, it is a yeah. journey, as you say, and it takes time, but that coaching over time will in the future projects have more of an impact. Uh, yes. on the end result, business results, learners, outcomes, all Absolutely. that. Absolutely. Yeah, no, it's, it's quite funny, um, you know, uh, with some existing stakeholders that I've worked with in the past and when more projects come in, now they come to me with, I have a problem. I'm like, okay, let's talk about it. Yeah. <laughs> as, as, as opposed to, hey, can you develop me a, um, a presentation or a workshop? And I'm like, mm, let, 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 let's just have a chat to see um, if that's the right um, approach or not. Yeah. That's really cool. <laughs> Um, what are you like, how do you learn yourself and what are you learning at yeah. the moment? Right. So, um, I am a big gamer. So yeah. I what game do you play? League of Legends. If anybody wants to play TFT, add me, Mande. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I love League of Legends and I draw inspiration from a lot of games as well, um, through to the, um, the interface interactions, even like sounds. As well, I get um, inspired by you know clicking noises or you know hey transition to new page, blah, like yeah. something fun like that. But I draw my inspiration from just talking to people. I really do talking to other um, learning people that are outside of um, my normal learning squad um, at Lendlease. Yeah, um, it's always yeah. nice to talk in team, but I think it's even better to really um, explore what's out there and, and connecting with the right people. So. Yeah. Um, each year I, I go on, um, you know, different conferences to connect with people um, that are outside of Australia. Um, yeah. look, I love, I love Australia. Don't get me wrong. But I think, again, it's nice to expand and further and see what's happening in other regions. Yeah. Um, so Any conferences you recommend that have been valuable for you? Yeah. So LXDCon, um, which is um, the learning canvas, experience canvas by Niels Bohr. So he usually hosts um, uh, uh, LXDCon each year, either in um, the Netherlands or in Singapore for anyone who's closer in Australia. So you can definitely go to that. That's highly recommended to just understand how to use the learning canvas. So I think if anyone is quite curious to see how um, you, know, you can blend design thinking, um, human centered approaches through to L&D practices, go to that conference. Yep. Um, DevLearn is always a, a good one. So I went to DevLearn probably in 2015 and I still use some of the stuff that I've learned there and that was cool. four years ago. It was amazing. And it's in Vegas. Why not? Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, and the recent one that I just went to was the Learning 2019 um, and that's hosted every year as well. So Cool. You know, outside of conferences, um, upskill yourself in some courses as well. Um, you know, do some design thinking courses, UX courses, um, reach out to see if there's any, um, you know, RE certificates or whatnot that are relevant yeah. for you. Um, Was that uh, RE that you just mentioned there? Yeah, yeah. So I think yeah. Ari has some, um, a couple of, oh no, or AITD. I don't know. I, I, I know some of my colleagues have completed some of their certificates, but, um, yeah. you know, if you want to go down the, um, that route of having um, a certificate, yep. go for gold. I think there's lots of organizations out there that create these um, nice programs to get yep. you the ID instructional design principles and whatnot that you can do. Yeah. And I think if you um, can't afford to go to these conferences, yeah. you can volunteer. So I know yeah. like you can help out. So that's a great way to be there. And wow. Ari, I know we went this year, but they have like a free section. So you don't have uh -huh. to spend the thousands of dollars to go, you can yeah. kind of get a taste and see what's trending and who's out there that way. 
Um, so look for those opportunities as well. You don't yeah. always have to fork out money for the development. Yeah. Um, and uh, another thing for me is um, I follow people that are not within learning. So I follow designers, I follow um, neuroscientists. It's always interesting to see what they share in terms of their knowledge as well. So um, follow people that are outside your domain, um, outside your field of interest, because you'll be surprised um, by the inspiration that you might get. Um, yeah. Is that on like LinkedIn, work. Instagram, Twitter? Where are you following? Yeah, yeah. so um, LinkedIn, Pinterest, Behance, Dribble um, is my favorite one. Um, Twitter is a good one as well. I'm a bit lazy on Twitter. I try sometimes if there's something really trending. Or, oh, I use Twitter to follow conferences. So if ah. there's an amazing conference out there that I can't afford to go to or I don't yep. get the opportunity to go to, I follow their hashtag. So each year for DevLearn, um, because I haven't been um, since 2015, but I would just follow people's hashtags and see what they've learned. I'm like, ooh, excited. Yeah, that's so good. Join all the conversations. Yeah, so that's a yeah. nice little hack that I personally do. Um, but just reading lots of article, go into Medium, go to, I, I use, I read a lot of like um, UX um, websites with their blogs and, and research papers and whatnot. So yeah. I'm happy to share all of that. I have so many resources that I, Okay, flick us the link so we can put them in the... Yeah, uh, oh, no, I have a whole bunch. <laughs> no worries. Hmm. Um, what else have I got? Let me check my list. Yeah, go for oh, it. Oh, actually, one thing I wanted to talk to you about is um, design skills. So mm. do you think people need a degree to learn design skills, such as graphic design or that? Oh, I can see by your reaction yeah. there. <laughs> yeah. Look, I'm, again, I'm a lazy designer. Um, and I say that very, very frequently because I'm all about efficiency. There's amazing tools out there that, you know, you can use to create and mimic graphics of graphic designers. Mm -hmm. Canva, for one, I've seen um, really cool e-learning developers just purely use Canva to create animations, to create um, really beautiful guides that probably will take me a long time to develop in in design or illustrator yep. um you know find the tool that works for you and sometimes it's it's not about the tool but it's about your um you know bringing that story to life with your content in various ways and shapes and forms so don't feel that you need to pick up um you know adobe animate illustrator in design after effects you know there's many 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 tools out there just experiment and find what works for you um, there's so many tutorials. The design community um, is amazing. You go on YouTube, you can find some free um, tutorials that would help you shape, you know, a concept. Um, yeah. You can go and complete, um, you know, I, I sign up to, you know, go to Udemy. There's amazing courses mm -hmm. there that you can complete for a fraction of a price. Um, so yeah, I what I did like was... like $50 or less. Yeah, less than that, less than that like, like 19 30. bucks. Yeah. So um, I'm, uh, for me, I'm not one for being in the classroom or learning online. Oh, yeah. I know. Um, it, it, it's <laughs> very hard for me to sit in a structured setting to learn. So probably a few years ago when I was only starting to get into the e-learning space, um, I thought to myself, oh, okay, so my background is HR and L&D. I need a graphics design diploma. Yep, I want to do that. So yep. I signed up for a college. It was um, about $12,000 um, via my HEX. So it added onto my HEX. And uh, I did one semester and I didn't like it. <laughs> oh, wow. So it, it just wasn't for me. So again, it's down to the approach of what works best for you and how you learn. Um, if going down the route of education works for you, go for it. If going down the route of completing tutorials, that's how I personally learned best and how I developed my skills. Um, in Illustrator, in Design, and the whole Adobe Creative Cloud suite is by doing personal projects. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's so much on YouTube and that out there, and I That's think really you can download any of the tools, and they have um, like free trials. So plan in advance to your instructional design. Plan in advance a little solution that you want to create yeah. for your portfolio. Download yeah. the free trial, and then freaking yeah. go and make. And then you can experiment, Absolutely. learn the tools, all that kind of stuff. And then you have something to show as your portfolio when you're going for a job or if you're trying to win. 100%. I, I totally agree with that. And I love, um, you know, pet projects. Um, and, and I continually create, I think for me to keep my brain going, I just create weird, funny things. So at the moment, <laughs> I'm such as. Uh, so, um, because I'm, I'm studying um, VR at the moment, so I've done a couple of courses, um, but it's purely just for my gaming side. I'm developing a, um, a game where you're entering a forest and you need to save the cows 
from a UFO invasion. So the UFOs will be flying down, trying to grab your cow, and you wearing your VR set, you need to shoot the spaceships down. Yeah. See, that, that's the weird stuff that's that I create. Cool. Like, I'm, just, I'm just a weird kid. But um, <laughs> Where did the passion from come from? From um, for VR, oh look, I've always been interested in augmented um, or immersive realities. Um, yeah. Personally, I, I haven't seen it used very well in learning yet. Um, my intention's not to probably, oh, maybe in five years, but not now. But I, I just love creating things, and it was yeah. again, it's another medium for me to create. Um, just I just want to create a fun game, like a couple of fun games, just purely for my entertainment. <laughs> if anything. Yeah. That's cool. Very cool. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, I'm conscious of time now because we're hitting the hour mark. Is there any final words or things that you want to share before we wrap up the show? Um, if anybody wants to ask me questions or get some more resources, just reach out to me on LinkedIn or um, Instagram, whatever. I don't articulate things quite well, so please feel free to reach out to me. <laughs> Do not say that. And I'll be more than happy to share all my resources and knowledge um, yeah. What's your um what's your Instagram tag and your what are you on LinkedIn? Yeah, I'm on LinkedIn. I'm Amanda Nguyen, one of the many Amanda Nguyens, but you, <laughs> I'm sure you'll find me in the learning space. Um and on Instagram it's um at M N D Y Design. Um follow me. I probably post more of my stories than my um actual posts. I used to well, I used to do a lot of hand lettering and um I saw that. Copy. They're so good. <laughs> yeah. So I did like um uh, for part time when I was um I took a gap year in my career um I yeah. was doing um, murals and graffiti freelance graffiti stuff so <laughs> oh I fucking love that that's so <laughs> cool fun. yeah so I uh, and I think that's where my creative side is channeled best in e learning um yeah. because I changed my career I was a generalist L and D um consultant just doing like workshops and facilitating L and D and L and D budgets and strategies and stuff yeah. and. I wasn't getting fulfilled as I, I wanted to be. So then I ventured out and then I did um, e-learning, instructional design, learning experience design, all the fun stuff. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Very cool. Okay, last yeah. thing. What is, if you could prescribe someone, something to people watching this to improve mm -hmm. themselves for the next 30 okay. days, what should they do daily? Um, practice your design skills through tutorials. Challenge yourself to do something every day in a piece of... Um, software that you want to develop yourself in so for example if it's in design that was a hot topic in our conversation oh, yeah. on instagram if it's in design go and create something every day in InDesign, whether it be a one page a guide um i started in look in design is a funny one i um learning that it took me a very long time i'm not gonna lie i didn't pick it up very well but how i tackled it i developed a 30 page guide for oh, wow. that i committed to and it was just learning. Uh, it took me yep. a very, very, very long time, but um, practice. So just keep practice. Challenge yourself in the next 30 days. Each day, do something um, in a tool, um, whether it be creating something small or something large. Just keep practicing. <laughs> That's really cool. Well, Amanda, I want to recognize you for adding so much value in today's Bell Vista Studio Show episode. Oh, my goodness. I feel very oh, I hope so. inspired. <laughs> um, I'm looking forward to getting into my client task now because I feel inspired yeah. and I want to apply great, some of the stuff great. that we've done. So great. thank you so much. I know this will add value to the industry. I really oh, appreciate you taking the time to show and share your skills with us. Awesome. No, thank you for having me. It was, uh, it was awesome. It was fun. <laughs> well, if anyone's watching and they recognize someone like Amanda that should be on the show, that we can break down the process and what they're up to, please let us know. Just reach out to me, Kim Tui, and I'll invite them onto the show so we can learn from them. And have an awesome day, everybody.